Hey guys, Brandon here from Fat Gaming. We got a very special guest today from Blind Squirrel. It's Brad Hendricks. How's it going, Brad? Good. How you doing, Brandon? Hey, fantastic. Thanks for uh, coming on the show to talk to us a little bit. Uh, really excited. But we're gonna start. We're gonna start pretty much from your guys' origin. So, uh, where did you guys' studio come to be? We were founded in 2010, um, and we were primarily a work for hire studio to start off with. We started off mostly as an engineering studio, um, working with 2K games on Civ 4, I think, was the first game, Civ 5, Civ 4, one of the two, and uh, working with Firaxis, and I think we worked with Jaeger shortly thereafter, but uh, basically work for hire studio and have been um, ever since. So, and we're working on a bunch of new things right now, but basically that's, that's where we started from. Yeah. That's awesome to see you guys, uh, come in such a long way. The first game I ever got my hands on that you guys had touched was the, uh, the XCOM port over to the consoles. So that's right. Yeah. That came a couple of years later, but yeah, that's definitely something that, uh, we were pretty excited to get involved with, with, uh, Frax is great studio too. So very cool. Um, so you have assisted on a lot of projects uh, in the past. You've worked on um, a variety of different with you know a variety of different studios, publishers. Um, so kind of based off of those interactions, like what do you want Blind Squirrel to be? Right. Well, I mean, work for hire is a great place for us as a starting studio. I think it's a great place for any studio that's sort of starting out to sort of get their feet wet. If um, you know. If they're a studio that doesn't have a lot of big name brands, so to say, um, it's a great way to start. Um, we will continue to do that work um, as long as we're being asked to, to do that. Um, we're expanding into more co-development type opportunities right now with uh, um, some large publishers. And um, I see us as a studio evolving into doing our own IP. Um, and we're actively pursuing that as we speak right now. Um, but, uh, that's the normal evolution of a studio work for hire is great. It's just never gonna, it's never going to get you to the end game, I guess, is a way to look at it. So, uh, we really want to start doing our own things. We have some very talented people to do that at this point. So, yeah, I could see it definitely, um, keep allowing you guys to hone your skills, get a little bit stronger and make sure your development team, uh, stay sharp. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, you know, when we're working with studios like Irrational Games, who at the time was still around, uh, Firaxis, um, Turtle Rock Studios, um, uh, there's just a whole host of studios, Avalanche, that we worked with on Disney. There's a lot of studios where we took what we thought was best practices and sort of, um, you know, and sort of went with it and learned what we thought was important and decided to do and not learn and unlearn what wasn't important. So... Um, but yeah, that's an important thing for us. Yeah, no, definitely. I could see that. Of course, the game everyone's hearing about right now that you guys are doing is the, uh, Bioshock collection. What kind of pressure do you guys take on, uh, approaching such a, a beloved franchise like that? Well, I mean, there's a lot of stakeholders, right? Um, and now, and Irrational was gone, but, uh, um, but, uh, 2K was still heavily involved. There's still a lot of existing people from the original Rational Games franchise that are still involved with 2K and they certainly are stakeholders. Um, originally it was a project that we were asked to do. Um, then as we went through and started finding out that we were able to really kind of add polish in areas that, uh, that previously hadn't been done, we went in and ripped out a lot of the geometry and, and, um, and really spent a lot of time on changing what I would call 10, 12 year old technology so that it would work on current, current gen tech, um, and really looked at the entire set of games and really, really basically fixed a lot of what were sort of legacy issues as well as improved upon, um, you know, a lot of what was done. I mean, the, the, the game is awesome, right? We haven't really changed anything about that. What we've done is make it look um, appropriate for the technology that we have right now. And I think uh, it's still going to be uh, an exciting game to play even today. And a lot of people I know, a lot of people want to play on their current gen devices. So we're excited to be part of that. Yeah, that kind of leads me to my next question. When you're doing a port, so obviously you guys have done a ton of them. You guys have done Borderlands, XCOM, the Red Dead, all kinds of stuff like that. What do you really focus on? Do you focus a lot on upgrading the graphics? Do you worry about squishing bugs, keeping the gameplay really smooth? Like what? what's your guys' focus on those? 
it really depends on the on the title. Once our engineering and, and art staff take a look at what we have, um, I mean, obviously, you know, all games sort of have these legacy issues that we have to go in and look at, right? I mean, obviously, the first thing we got to do is get it running, right? Um, sometimes that's monumental in, in nature because of the sheer fact that the technology is so out of date and a lot of the middleware technologies that that uh, require the game to function on current gens just doesn't work. Um, and there may not be an easy way to port it upwards. But basically, you know, look, our, our, as a studio, you know, we, we have something to showcase. And so um, we want to come in and, and fix all those things, make sure that it works. We also want to make it beautiful. We want to make it exciting to play and worth the spending the additional set of money, probably because of the fact you bought it once before. Why would I buy it again? Um, we want to make sure that we're doing justice to the original title and adding a lot of extra polish to the original title and building upon what was already a successful title to start off with. So, yeah, but we, a lot of, we spend a lot of time on, on graphics. Obviously that's a real big, huge part of it. Um, sound is typically, you know, sound is a lot easier to deal with in most cases. Um, but graphics quality, the ability of, um, we, we've had to go in and actually rewrite some of the technology itself and, and, and you know, do multi-threading where that wasn't really an, an issue in, in older gen products, especially on the console side. So yep. we really go in and do quite an overhaul with regards to the tech. So That's really cool, though, because it does really show the strength that uh, your company can do. You know, it shows that you guys can go in and rebuild whole parts if that's what's needed. Yeah. And yeah. And it, Oh, go ahead. That's exactly what we do. That's I'm sorry. This is exactly what we do. I mean, um, a lot of it looks like, you know, it's engineering in nature, but a lot of it isn't in some cases. Like when you guys finally get a chance to see uh, Bioshock, um, there was a lot that was done. And a lot of the geometry was changed. It's still the same geometry. We've just obviously made it so that it looks better on current gen devices. Um, the You know, the, the resolutions are much, much, much higher now. So, and the frame rates are actually... <laughs> way better than they were when the product first shipped. That's that's awesome. So you did say earlier that you guys were kind of set on doing a new IP. And earlier you guys had been talking to Yahoo and you guys were saying that you did want to announce your new IP in 2016. Obviously now with you guys doing the Bioshock collection, can we still expect that announcement around your new IP this year? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think the short answer is... Um, not at the moment. Um, we are actively working on something, and um, at the moment, I, there isn't really anything I can talk about. Unfortunately, I apologize. No, we un we understand. Uh, definitely, you know, once you pick up a project, especially something like this, you want to make sure that you're not splitting your team too thin. That you know you're focused on you know what you're currently working on. Absolutely. Yep. So there's a lot. I mean, look, at the, the current status of the studio is this: is that we are um, handling a lot of co-development stuff with some of the largest publishers in the world right now. Um, some titles that I can't talk about, obviously, but there's more to come from us, from Blind Squirrel Games, with regards to working on um, existing franchises moving forward. Um, some of the new things we're hoping to announce, hopefully um, in the beginning of 2017, will be sort of our sort of venture into the into you know our own IP. Um, and what that means right now is, you know, TBD, right? So but we're excited to announce that we have, we've just spent quite a bit of effort, time and money on investing in our design teams internally. And we've managed to get some really exciting talent from some of the largest studios, um, in the country to come and be part of that team. And so Shalom Mann, who, uh, hails from Sony is now running that team and, uh, with, uh, Chris Cagle, who came from Insomniac Games to sort of take on that design. Um, we have some people from Irrational as well, as a matter of fact, that are coming to work for us from a design perspective. So we have a pretty exciting team of designers working on our new IP and I can't wait to share that when we get a chance. Yeah. Um, I mean, with you guys have working on so many games and now you guys having members of your own team coming from all these different studios, um, how much of this influences your guys' new IP? Like, does this kind of help point you guys in a new uh, direction for your future? I think so. Yeah. I mean, you know, we, we have a, a passion. I mean, if you look at, I mean, if you look at the titles we've worked on, it's pretty, pretty diverse. We have RTSs and and RPGs and action RPGs and, and shooters and first person shooters and 
Um, we've done a lot. I think the only thing we haven't done is a music game and or a, uh, a racing game. I think are the only two games we haven't worked on at, at this point in time. Not to say we might not in the future, but uh, at the moment we don't have plans in doing anything like that. Um, but uh, we have a lot of passion in the RPG space, I think. Um, so that's about what I would say is where I think we might be headed um, in that kind of realm. So Very cool. Um, so obviously right now, uh, a lot of the industry is focused on kind of moving forward, doing different things. Uh, the big one being virtual reality. Is this something your studio has kind of looked into? Is it something they're maybe investigating or even intrigued by? That's all I'm going to say. There's a little box in the corner over there. So we are definitely investigating VR. Um, we're being very cautious as um, uh, a lot of people are, some people are not. Um, I think there's opportunity that exists there. I think obviously the, the financial opportunity in the short term is probably not that great, but it's a good space for us to be in. We are definitely absolutely pursuing and working with VR right now. And in what capacity is something I can't talk about, but we are absolutely looking at it. Um, it's not a sole focus of ours, but it's definitely a uh, splinter focus of ours right now. We definitely want to be part of that initial group that's going out and making sure that we understand the tech. We actually have, um, and the from a technical perspective, we have some new technologies that we're working on with VR that allows us to render at extremely high rates of speed, which is obviously a big, huge factor in VR right now. So from a t technology perspective, we want to make sure we understand that. From a design perspective, Chris Cagle um, hails from Insomniac, and that was one of his primary jobs there. Now, it's not his sole focus here at, uh, at Blind Squirrel Games at the moment, but it's certainly... Uh, a skill set that he brings to the table for us. Yeah. Um, so the industry kind of as a whole is definitely changing. You know, we're getting a lot more focused around these social media things, the YouTube, Twitch, um, even like, you know, these big names like IGN, Kotaku and stuff like that. Do you think with the internet being so much more versatile and having a, a much larger scope over the gaming industry, do you guys ever think about that when you're kind of working on your games, kind of moving forward? Do you guys concentrate on any of that stuff? I think there's a huge difference. I mean, obviously, there are traditional kind of publishing methodologies of the past where there was hard copies of discs that that relied on, you know, um, you know, traditional media to get the word out. I think that's sort of changing. Um, you know, you have your YouTube influencers that have millions and millions of followers um, that can really uh, change the way games are are uh, are uh, marketed. And, and, and our community. I think it's a huge opportunity um, and an interesting opportunity. Viral marketing is something that we wouldn't necessarily talk about 10 years ago. Um, and I think that's, you know, a big, huge part of what those um, mediums provide. Um, you know, if, if we, as an indie, independent studio, I mean, you can have a really solid game and these people who are influencers on YouTube, um, you know, sites like yourself um, could come out and really um, say, hey, you got to check this out. This is awesome. And next thing you know, you got two or 300,000 followers. That's a big deal. Um, that's a, That used to cost a lot of money to go out and get, right? Um, and so so I think studios like us, are, we're actively looking at influencers. The ironic thing is now even the influencers in our industry are now being um, managed by agents, which is just fascinating to me. Um, you know, just like stars, you know, and the movies are, it's just crazy. So we are definitely actively pursuing, um, um, making sure we understand that market. I think it's a huge influence and will continue to be a huge influence, especially in the digital space where physical, um, disc and, and whatnot are sort of kind of going to the wayside. So how do we market, um, our products in the future. And I think sites like yourself and, and other uh, influencers are going to be a huge, huge um, opportunity for independent game developers like ourselves to sort of go out and maybe try to uh, do things on our own, especially with, you know, new IP, smaller IP, smaller get bets, you know, things like that, you know, I think are going to be a big, big deal in the future. But definitely, definitely different than it, the way it used to be when we first started in our industry. So Yeah, I think it's a lot more um, friendly towards those smaller games and stuff like that. You don't have to have a big budget for marketing or anything like that. If you put out a gem that's really good and one of those influencers picks it up, you know, they can get the word out there without you guys, you know, without a smaller company having to shell out a bunch of money to get the word out. So that's, that's it's really cool. 
I mean, you know, hey, great. You know, we're all in for saving money. Uh, and if we <laughs> obviously got to have a good game because it really doesn't mean anything. And I think that's the kind of cool part is there's some real genuine opportunity with you guys. Like you guys are um, influenced by a different sort of realm than the typical magazine or whatever, uh, because you guys aren't being paid to do something. You're actually doing it out of the goodness of your heart. You're, you're true gamers and you, you play something and you tell the truth. And I think that's um, a great thing for, for companies that really have something special to tell. Um, and you guys are definitely helping out with that. Why, thank you. Yeah, we, we try to make sure that we, we always give our opinions and that, you know, we stay true to, you know, the gamers that we are at heart, definitely. Absolutely. And that's a big deal, right? That's the difference between influencers today and magazines of tomorrow or yesteryear, I guess, of the days of yore. <laughs> yeah, no, very cool. So really excited to uh, get my hands on this game. I think uh, I, I love the original Bioshocks when they came out. Now, you know, being able to play a more polished, smoother running one just sounds phenomenal to me. So really excited about your game. And thank you uh, so much for hanging out with us today. Well, Brennan, it's nice to meet you. And thank you for asking me to come to talk to you guys today. Of course, yeah. Hopefully, uh, once the game comes out and uh, everyone gets super excited about it, we can have you back on to talk about uh, how it felt after the launch. Absolutely. That'd be great. Awesome. Hey, thanks for hanging out, and we'll uh, see you soon. He will abandon you, my sweet Elizabeth. Once he has what he needs, he will leave you alone. We swim in different oceans, but land on the same shore. And it always starts with a lighthouse.